Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today, The Republic of Thieves, book three in the Gentleman Bastard sequence by Scott Lynch. All right. Um, all right, so if you've made it this far and you've watched my other reviews, there are going to be spoilers in this review. If you've read two books already and you're looking at book three and you're like, should I read it or not? Just, you've already committed two books, just read the third one. Or just have it spoiled for you, either way. But I'm going to spoil stuff, so leave now if you don't want to get any uh, things spoiled for you. Okay? All right. So, um, Scott is great with characters and with pros, um, as usual. Uh, I think he did a really excellent job with the entire troop uh, that is in the past scenes. And I think he did a good job with Sabatha. Uh, and I'm happy that we finally got her. So um, I did find it interesting um, to have the Bonds Magi brought back into the story in more of a direct antagonist role um i guess indirect it, it's tough because they're kind of like there but they're kind of pulling the strings right um they seem to be like the overarching threat to jean and Locke. um i'm very happy that we finally got to meet sabatha because it's basically been hinted at since book one that Locke has this secret lover that went off somewhere that we don't know anything about and it's pretty important if you're going to hint at that for us to actually get it. And I'm very happy that we actually got to meet her. And I'm glad that she got to be a part of both the present and the past storyline. So we really got a lot of good depth to her. Um, I honestly thought this book might be one of the... So Scott does this... The If you've read his other stuff, he does the same thing in this one where he does this thing where he jumps between past and present he goes into the past you've got a chapter in the past you jump into the present you get a chapter in the present i mean he calls them interludes but they're really just chapters um and they progress side by side where you get the past story and the present story happening at the same time um i actually think this one might have been one of the best done in that term in, in that in that way um i found myself you know, the chapter would build a lot of tension and then that tension would be left on that cliffhanger and it would make me want to go get through the next chapter so that I could read the chapter after that would figure out what happened next. But on top of that, the other chapters would do that. So, you know, we'd get a cliffhanger and then we'd read the chapter of the present and we get a cliffhanger and then we'd read the chapter of the past and get a cliffhanger and then read the chapter of the present and it'd just keep going back and forth. I thought that was pretty well done and it kept the tension going up uh, pretty quick. Um, pretty major spoiler. So, uh, the Falconer is coming back as a villain. I actually kind of like it. Um, I, I think that it's going to be interesting for kind of like this demon of the past quotation marks to come back and haunt Locke and Jean. Um, I think it would have been a little bit more interesting if he had been like, I know he's talked about throughout the book, but it would have been a little bit more interesting if he had been like, there'd been like, you know, in a small, I know there was like little mini scenes uh, of the bonds main drive, but it would have been cool if there was like this a small scene here and there planted throughout the stories of like us in his, instead of it all being at the end, it's planted throughout where it's us in his head and we get to see how crazy he is and then at the end, he finally breaks free of this prison and goes after his mom and, like, takes basically kind of is going to wipe out the other half of the Bonds Magi. Um, uh, so a lot of positive things. Uh, let's get into some critiques. Um, with the Bonds Magi, since they are, they have been such an important part and important antagonist to Locke and Jean, um, two things one i wish we knew more about how their magic actually worked i feel like the rules of their magic is very flimsy uh it's a very soft magic system which is fine but Locke and jean need to figure out ways around that and i'm kind of 
like the whole time throughout the story, I was like, why isn't Locke like setting up a ploy to learn more about the Bond Magi so that he can beat them? And I don't know that he would, but he's arrogant enough to think he could. And I think that it's weird that he doesn't even try to figure out like what are some like especially since they're in their city you know like what are their secrets can he exploit them like obviously jean is a weak point in that term so he'd have to kind of do it on his own um i i think it would have made the story a bit more interesting rather than just being about the present just being about this election that no one really cared about anyway um I gave praise to the going back and forth. Um, there were, this is very minor critique. There were a few that were just a little chapters that were just like a little too long. Scott does do a lot of these really long chapters. And that, uh, for me, you know, like for me, it's not as big of a deal because I get through books pretty quick. But like even a little bit, I would be like, oh, yeah, what was what happened? Oh, yeah, that's what happened. And, like, I'd pick up on it quick, but, like, someone that's not reading it, you know, super consistently and just, like, picks it up, reads, you know, reads 10, 30 pages, puts it down, reads another little bit, they could get lost very easily, and I think that's potentially a problem. Um, I'm reading through all my notes. There's a lot. (laughs) Um... So the big thing was that I didn't really, okay, yeah, I didn't really like the ending that much. Um, the The reason isn't because there weren't cool things that happened at the end, um, but the reason being is that this has happened for basically every book, and in the first book I really liked it because they, they kind of started off from a place of power and they went to a place of weakness. And in the last book, I explained how I didn't like that they basically got pulled around like puppets the entire ga- the entire book, and then they didn't get anything for their troubles. They didn't outsmart them. They didn't do anything. And they kind of got in the same situation again. Like, they go through this whole trial of, like, rigging this election, which isn't ends up being a tie. Um, and then there's there's no consequences for that. But there's also no rewards. They're not in any... They're actually in a... Like, they're in a slightly better position, I guess, because Locke isn't dying. But there, there's no there's no change of circumstance, which I think is important, especially when you're writing a series. You can't just keep having them reset to this basic thing where, oh, well, the next book, they need to figure out how to get money again. N- no. Like, we've been dealing with this for essentially two and a half books now stop (laughs) like let us deal with new problems like they are smart and we from their backstory just with the two of them they are very capable individuals they should have no problem making money back like i know their schemes sometimes take a long time to set up but like they should be able to live comfortably very easily i'm not saying that they would but like they shouldn't be these destitute people all the time um and the other thing is is this happened again as in the last book which is that the villain in the backdrop is pulling Locke and Jean's strings and that's just how the story is they just get played around like puppets the entire time this time by the instead of by um uh who was it in the last book the the like general dude i i can't remember his name i've already forgotten i just i finished it not too long ago um but now it's the bonds magi pulling around patience is just pulling them around like puppets and it's like do something get yourself out of the situation you are both very intelligent people yeah you might fail but that failure would be more interesting than them just going along with the bonds magi plan I don't understand why they just go along with the plan instead of actually doing something. Um, Last big critique. Um, Big critique. 
Last critique is uh, in the past story, the gang goes and bit breaks out Moncrane and repairs a relationship between him and Baron Buladazi. Uh, forgive me if I pronounce that wrong. And then we know the Baron's, you know, terrible. And we get the, you know, he gets killed, which I thought was fine. But then it's like, why did you have this broken relationship in the first place in order that the gang has to fix it? And then you kill the Baron and Mon Crane's dips with all the money. It's almost like that there's just like this sense of like, like I would have been more okay with it if like they get away with getting rid of the Baron's body or maybe there's a problem with that but they still get the money or maybe they lose the money somehow. But like Moncrane stealing the money from his own company. I know he's kind of set up as a little sleazy throughout the whole thing, but it's just like, it doesn't feel good plot wise. It doesn't bring about this like resolution. The company's basically like, and then they're like, Oh, well we'll just have chains pay for the company. We'll just give them money from the hundreds of thousands of gold pieces we have. And it's like, then what was the point? <laughs> What's the point of you coming here then? Um, so I think that the ending for that part of the story, it, it, it undercuts the kind of the whole point of the story a little bit for me. Um, so overall, uh, I think the first book is great. I, I, I think the first book is a good a really good book and i think i would recommend that book to people um but only that book i i i I personally like three better than i like two i like this book a lot better than i like the last one because i felt like at least we get Locke's backstory in this one i care more about knowing that as a reader than i did about the last one which was just like a bunch of like sailing around and doing random stuff as they're kind of pushed into a situation that they don't even try to really break out of. Um, so I, I'm skeptical, but I'm optimistic because the next book comes out this year. So I'm skeptically hopeful because you can have a bit of a slog in the middle of your series as long as you close out well. My concern is that I don't think Scott is super great with setting up a complex plot. Because basically every single book has kind of been the same plot line. And when you, that's fine if you're writing individual books, but when you're writing a series... They have to not only be their own books, but they also have to all tie together in this congruent plot line. And I'm a little worried that that's not going to happen. I'm still going to read book four. I'm going to give it a shot, see what happens. I don't know how many books are left uh, to come out, how many he plans on writing. Um, the longer it goes on, the more I think you lose readers, though, by doing this kind of plotting and setup. I mean, there'll always be people who really loved it, no matter what. Um, but to have a truly great series, you need to set up these complex stories and have them... Like, he does a good job with keeping consequences around, like character like deaths and stuff like that mean something to the characters going forward. They kind of tie in. But there's no, like... There's no goal. There's no end goal for Locke and Jean. They're just being tossed around in the wind. And they need some kind of like the I guess the best example that I can think of off the top of my head is like the wheel of time um, and I'm not going to spoil the wheel of time for people but the characters have goals that they want to reach and that's what drives them forward Locke and Jean just want to be left alone <laughs> they just want to like get their money and call it a day and those don't make interesting series they they need they need to be going towards something i think with some of the setup 
that was done in this book because there's a lot of setup at the end. I think there's a chance to remedy that situation moving forward because we now know that like Locke kind of wants to figure out who he is. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, that's going to be it for this review. Uh, if you guys liked it, you know, please leave a like, leave a comment. We can talk about it as long as everyone's pleasant. Um, and I hope you guys subscribe if you do enjoy the channel. Um, I'm hoping to get through a lot more books, more TV shows, hopefully some movies and stuff like that this year. So thank you for watching.